energy health. Each week before I do this program, I sit in meditation for a few minutes beforehand, and I, I visualize you, I picture you. I picture you being there, listening, and being part of the conversation, and then you getting exactly what you need from hearing the words and seeing the images and the ideas that we share here. I really am passionate about sharing these things with people. And I know that we're part of this community. So when I sit in meditation, I, I visualize you there. I know in consciousness, we're all one. I know that we are really together in the sense of being part of this great experiment in consciousness happening on planet Earth. So I feel you there. And I so intend that you get what you need to, what you need most from each episode of High Energy Health. Thank you for being here. It's a real commitment to your well-being to show up and join us. Also, for more techniques and tools, go and check out my new book, Bliss Brain, at blissbrain.com. And also at blissbrain.com, you'll get a free meditation. And you'll also get access to eight meditations that accompany the eight chapters of my new book, Bliss Brain. All of that at blissbrain.com. And for more on Emily's work, go to her website, which is Ziva Meditation. Meditation. Mm -hmm. And her book is called Stress Less, Accomplish More. So Emily, there are so many things I was just joking during the break that I, I marked up your book and I dog-eared about 25 pages and then I actually forgot to ask you any, any of the questions I prepared. That's the sign of a fun, spontaneous interview. <laughs> so Emily, uh, the, the, the concept though you have here in, you talk about the I'll be happy when syndrome, and we're always just deferring our happiness when we do that. But you talk about the, the definition of bliss versus happiness and that they're not the same. I really love the way you define bliss. Go ahead and share that idea mm. with us. Yeah, so my definition of bliss is that background knowingness that everything is playing out exactly as it's meant. It's that background of I'm trusting that everything is not going to be okay, that it is already okay. And the paradoxical thing that happens is that when we start to build this black background of bliss and we start to have a bliss brain, we start to flood our bodies and brains with dopamine and serotonin, is that no matter, it actually frees you up to feel the full spectrum of human emotions. So oftentimes we won't even allow ourselves to experience full happiness because we're afraid of the letdown of full sadness. So a lot of people are living their lives between a four and a six. They're putting, they're putting guardrails around their heart because they don't want to get too excited for the fear of disappointment. And so once you have that trust, that knowingness, that expansiveness, you can take the guardrails off your heart and feel all of the colors of emotion. And it is an important distinction is that happiness and bliss are not the same. It is important to, it is possible to experience bliss even when you're sad. It's possible to experience bliss even when you're angry. It would be the 0.001% of you that is trusting that everything is playing out as it is meant. And I think that it's important for us, especially in this time of pandemic, especially in this time of election, where things are changing so quickly that we really anchor in on and put our attention on that knowingness on, it might be 0.001%, but it's there. And if we put our attention on it, then it starts to grow. And paradoxically, the more we start to feel that bliss, the more we start to feel anchored and satiated and blissful right here, right now, it actually supercharges your manifesting abilities. Because when you're manifesting from a place of lack or need or want, then you're accidentally watering the, the weeds instead of watering the flowers. You're putting your attention on the lack of the thing versus feeling it and experiencing it as if it's happening now. And so I've really found that the combination of meditation and manifesting is so much more powerful than either one alone, right? Because you could meditate all day, but if you don't know what you want, nature can't give it to you. And you could manifest all day, but if your body is stressed, chances are you don't believe that you deserve it. Plus, what you're seeking to manifest is likely to be disconnected from your highest good. It may be stuff you really want, but it may be just part of your conditioning you want that and it may not really be from your highest good but if you meditate first and connect then with the universe then what you're likely to want to manifest changes yes beautifully said yeah it's a, it's a two-way conversation you're placing the order with the cosmic waitress but also she's talking to you and saying like hey these are your gifts this is how we want to use you in the world so it really is a two-way conversation no one is dictating in one direction or the other I uh, watched Jean Houston, we were both keynoting a virtual conference two weeks ago, and I watched her, her talk and she said, don't be boring to God. She said, do interesting things down here on the earth plane, and then God will come down and 
have a chat with you and get interested in what you're up to. But if you're into your own story, if you're into your own lack and limitation and problems, then you're, you're boring God. <laughs> yes, I love that so much. I've yeah. found that to be true. I've just basically let my whole life burn to the ground, um, like just in that I'm surrendering to all of this change and I'm in huge personal transformation in this global transformation and I've never felt more supported by nature. It's just high fives from nature all day, every day. My manifesting is speeding up because I'm, I'm willing to let go of the old in order to step into who I can become. Yeah, I know that it can be viewed through that lens, all of the challenges we face today are far more than before. And for people who are attached to the way things were, each insult just accumulates until eventually it becomes overwhelming. But for those who are flexible, you dance this way, you dance that way, you dance you know, the next way, you're dancing with the universe and you just, you actually aren't stressed. It's, it's actually quite hard to explain to people around you. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a beautiful title, Dancing with the Universe. That should be your next book, Dancing with the Universe. <laughs> yeah, because you're, a bit, you're able to adapt. And I would say that's my favorite benefit of meditation is that it increases your adaptation energy. That where no matter what life is throwing at you, you're, you're adapting like Neo in the matrix, right? You don't change the demands coming at you. You change your ability to adjust, adapt, flow, dance. And that's when things get interesting, both for you and for God. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And then you are this co-creative flow of meditation and manifestation, and then the things you, you want are the things that are in alignment, not only for your own highest good, but the highest good of all. And I know that that's very different. I was mentioning to you on the break that that's very different from the way people who usually teach or think about the law of attraction teach it. But just saying, I surrender, and then in, in, in the great monastic tradition, it's non nobis domine, thy will be done. Just, you know, I just surrender myself to the great beyond, and, and then I become an instrument for, as St. Francis said, the instrument of, of thy peace. You know, you just become that, that in the world, and you seek to do things that express those higher values and that higher cadence, which is always in sync with everything else going on in the cosmos. So mm -hmm. it's a powerful way, and it's a very different way of seeing, seeing manifestation. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, you know, because it's some of our mutual friends that have sort of brought that law of attraction into the, you know, popular vernacular. And I think we all owe them a debt of gratitude of introducing this concept that thoughts become things. And in order to introduce that in a popular way, they had to sort of capitalize on the I'll be happy when syndrome, you know, put a Ferrari on your vision board and you'll get a Ferrari, you know, that was meeting people where they are. Now, you know, people who have been practicing these spiritual things for longer, I think we can have a higher level conversation, which is that if you are really tapped in and listening to your divinely inspired desires, um, that it's not about you'll be happy when you get the Ferrari or the girlfriend or the zero in the bank account, is that you're already happy as an indicator of where to deliver your fulfillment to the world. And so what I found is that meditation and manifesting together transitions me from being a bag of need looking to be fulfilled, even through the law of attraction, right? Let me attract my boyfriend and then I will be happy. It's like, no, I'm meditating, I'm already fulfilled. I already have dopamine and serotonin coursing through my brain, my brain and body. And now I will use my desires as nature's GPS. Where is nature guiding me to go and deliver my fulfillment to the world? And I find that when that shift happens, it changes everything. <laughs> It does change everything, absolutely everything. Emily, thank you so much for sharing your passion, your wisdom, your joy with us today. I feel totally inspired. I can feel that I have so much dopamine and serotonin flowing through me right now. <laughs> 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 I can't wait to go and share it. Bless you, mm -hmm. thank you. You've been listening to High Energy Health. For more on Emily's work, go to zivameditation.com. Her book is Stress Less, Accomplish More. For a free copy of my latest book, go to It's Dawson Church. We'll share again next week. 